teleporting onto your screen is an epic masterclass tutorial. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the first ever War Paints Fanatic tutorial on the Army Painter channel. We can't wait to show off this high performance paint in real time and what better subject to paint than a Primaris Terminator. What better way to show off the unsurpassed coverage of this exciting new range than by painting the armor red. We have Thomas in the studio here and he's applying a smooth coat of mulled berry using a regiment brush over top of a Zenithal primer of black to white using our color primer sprays. Traditionally, red is a difficult color to paint due to its poor coverage, but as you can see here, Thomas is able to achieve one coat coverage with ease. The Fanatic paints feature our proprietary stabilizer technology that enables us to utilize 300 to 700% more pigment in a high covering base formulation. After applying a smooth coat all over the mini, Thomas will apply our new dark red wash all over the armor. Our beloved wash formula has remained the same, but we've added some new colors to the range. This dark red wash is perfect for red armor as we're painting here. And now that we have our darker base tones established, we'll begin applying our brighter mid-tones to the model. Using Wyvern Fury and a detail brush, begin highlighting up by focusing the first highlight color within the shaded areas that the wash helped to establish. For any of the larger rounded areas like the shoulder pad, you'll want to work from the highest surfaces and blend the paints into the deeper colors, allowing them to remain in the shaded areas. This new formulation with the stabilization technology allows these paints to be thinned to extreme levels while retaining pigmentation, which makes these blending techniques very easy and effective. On the top of the Terminator armor, Thomas will focus the highlights towards the back of the plate and begin working up a gradient of that Wyvern Fury. Repeat these steps all over the raised areas of the miniature. Then using pure red, you'll apply a more focused highlight, leaving some of the previous color remaining towards those shaded areas. With Topaz Skin, you can begin picking out the hard edges and details with an edge highlight. Just be as neat as you can here on the more detailed areas and on the more rounded and broader surfaces, you can work with a more refined gradient blend. Now with Barbarian Flesh, you'll apply the most focused highlight reserved for only the sharpest edges and details. And with Matte White for a final spectral highlight. To really push the saturation of this red armor, Thomas is going to use speed paint thinned with our speed paint medium to apply a glaze. This transparent paint will help to push the vibrance, but also meld all of the previous brushwork for a nice harmonious blend. Let's take a look at those steps all together. Hit pause if you want to screenshot it and save it for later. With that armor finished, let's move on to base coating the face on the miniature. Thomas is painting a light skin tone with a base of Barbarian Flesh. Next, he'll apply a wash of strong skin shade over all of the skin. He'll come back with that Barbarian Flesh and use this for the first highlights. It's important to leave some of the wash in the shaded areas and details to keep that contrast while working up the highlight layers. Next, with Dorado Skin, he'll push the highlight a bit more focusing this on the raised areas and inside the areas he previously painted with Barbarian Flesh. And with a touch of matte white, he'll further refine those highlights. Thomas is going to grab some of our stabilizer and mix it with the Wyvern Fury. Now the stabilizer is already in the paints, but we have a pigmentless stabilizer that you can help to use thin the paints. It's very effective at creating a nice glaze consistency. He's gonna use this around the eyes the mouth and cheeks, and this red really helps to give the skin a realistic tonality. Now it's time to paint some of Thomas's trademark stubble. His recipe includes some deep ocean blue with a mix of that Dorado skin. He's gonna apply it around the jaw and chin to give the appearance of a five o'clock shadow. And go ahead and use some of that pure deep ocean blue, thin it down and glaze that once again over the bearded areas, and you can use that to base coat the hair. Going back to Barbarian Flesh, and we'll once again refine the highlights on the face. Wargamer Detail Brush is perfect here, but for even more brush control and a finer tip, the Insane Detail may be better suited for those who are working on improving their brush control. Now Thomas has grabbed some of the new Ice Yellow, which is sure to be a favorite for the showcase painters out there to use for mixing up paints and adding highlights. We're using it here for our Terminator's teeth. Now let's revisit that process one more time in this composition. Onto the trademark Aquila on the chest of this Terminator, using a base coat of matte black, Thomas will use an overbrush highlight of deep ocean blue, 
since it's a deeper color to begin with, you can simply trace the bristle sides over the raised edges of the wings to simply push the tonality of the details. Now with Thunderous Blue, you can begin adding more definition utilizing this color sparingly on the raised edges and corners of this ornate chest piece. We're gonna jump around a little bit, grab some weapon bronze and apply a simple base coat to the skull motif in the center of the Aquila. And we'll also use this color to pick out some of the other details like uh, the belt, the iron halo, the shoulder trim, and the hilt of the sword. We'll go back to the deep ocean blue to begin basing in some of the other ornate details on the armor like the crux terminatus and the bolter casing as well as the inner robes and other details. We will highlight these first with thunderous blue, leaving the previous color in the lower portions and shaded areas. We'll refine that highlight with a bit of wolf gray in a more focused application. Finally, we'll use some ice yellow to pick out the hardest details. This blend from cold to warm makes for a very convincing stone motif effect. Let's check that out one more time. Going back to the gold trim, we're going to grab some of our strong skin wash and use this over the bronze areas that we previously base coated. The red tones in this shade work really nicely with the gold and bronze flakes in this reformulated metal range. We'll move towards greedy gold and apply this to the raised areas, leaving some of that shading in the recesses. And we'll grab one of my personal favorites from the new metallic range, True Brass, and we'll apply a final refined highlight to all of the gold metallics, which makes for a fantastic gold recipe. But before we're done, Thomas is going to glaze all of the gold with Fanatic Military Shader. This is a deep muted green wash, which works really nicely against the more yellow metallics and red shadows for very realistic gold. Now one more step. We're gonna grab some of the new metallic. This one is Mithril. We'll be putting this to use on the most raised and hardest edges. This color is perfectly suited for those final spectral highlights when painting metallics. To paint the seals and parchment on the Terminator, begin with a base coat of desert yellow. Yes, this fan favorite color makes a repeat appearance in this new range, but now reformulated for better coverage and performance. Define those shadows with a bit of Fanatic soft tone. Once dry, apply your first highlight with Dorado skin. Apply this to the flat and raised areas, leaving the shaded desert yellow in the recesses. You can work in a linear fashion here as it helps to establish texture. And you can reinforce that texture with a bit of matte white applied in gentle layers with an emphasis on the raised areas. Next, we're going to apply some alien purple to the seals. Careful here not to paint over any of the hard work from the previous steps. If you couldn't tell, Deep Ocean Blue is one of Thomas's favorite colors. It's so versatile. We've seen him use it to shade the skin, as a base coat for the stone motifs, and now as a shadow glaze for purple. Next up, grab some Mage Cast Magenta and apply it to the raised areas on the seals. Thomas needed a bit of a break for some freehand, so let's watch as he applies a very thin down mix of matte black and Dorado skin for the writing on the parchment. It's almost insane how much you're able to thin down these new Fanatic paints. This stabilizing technology is what sets this range apart as it retains pigment dispersion even when thin to these crazy levels. It's just crazy stuff. Take your time here and just trace in any designs or lines of writing that you'd like. Thomas has found a bit of that Dorado skin again, and you'd think with 216 colors to choose from, he would have found another one to show off, but that's the thing with artists like him. They're always thinking outside the box or within the confines of the colors that they already applied to their palette. All joking aside, once that base coat is complete, he'll apply a simple feather highlight of matte white over the broader raised areas of the cloak next. We'll repeat these steps on one of the crests before applying some more freehand work, this time a checker motif using Wyvern Fury as a base. It's important to thin your paint and use a fine tip brush for ultimate control. A detail brush will suffice for most. Take your time and be as neat as you can, but once you have your grid outline finished, it will aid in filling in the checkers as it will act like a barrier, sort of like a meniscus effect. Before applying the checkers to the opposing crest, apply a simple highlight of deep ocean blue, then with Wyvern Fury to base in your checkers. Refine the edges with a bit of thunderous blue, use pure red to push the saturation on the red, then use matte white to apply a final refined highlight. Finally, we'll apply a glaze of speed paint blood red over the checkers and white edge highlights. 
Let's take a look at the finished crest now. Now it's time to finish off the rest of the metallics. Begin with a base coat of the new Warpaint Fanatic Cobalt Blue Metallic Paint over all of the areas you'd like to be silver. Apply a wash of dark tone to all of the metal bits to help establish shadow and detail. Then with plate mail metal, you can add your first layer of highlights. And on the sword blade here, only apply this to the top half of the sword. This will help to create a very simple but realistic reflective appearance. Now with mithril, apply a final edge highlight to all of those metal bits. And there you have it. All that's left is to base your miniature to fit the theme of the rest of your army or go nuts and base it however you like if you're planning to put it on display or entering it into your next painting competition. If so, we wish you luck in the showcase and for glory on the tabletop. If you're not subscribed to the Army Painter on YouTube yet, you should think about it because we have loads more tutorials just like this one in the works. If you'd like to learn more about Warpaints Fanatic, please be sure to visit us at www.thearmypainter.com.